you just like think you're beyond these like petty problems but then your mind turns on and you you realize that you're not hello hello i have missed you guys i'm just gonna jump right in i'm here to explain where i've been the past four months and just talk about what's going on. So in a previous video, I talked to you guys about my struggles with anxiety and my low appetite. But for a few months last year, it ended up becoming a bigger issue than I was comfortable sharing. After I opened up about it in that video, unfortunately, it ended up getting a lot worse and I started losing a lot of weight from simply exploiting my lack of hunger. And what I mean by that is, is that I took advantage of my low appetite as I lost more and more weight and I blindly ignored it. I was convinced that my body was still trying to settle into its natural set weight. I was also under an illusion that I was doing super well that at first I didn't notice I was losing so much weight, but I ended up losing more than beyond what I believe my set weight is and didn't do anything to stop it. It was only for a few months, but those few months were enough to throw me off track. And I think I know why it happened. First of all, I am so unbelievably far from perfect, I would be the first person to say it. But I would be lying if I said that the positive comments about my body didn't start getting to my head. And I'm ashamed how the positive reinforcement affected me. Comments like, you look amazing, you've proved all the haters wrong, and you look so good now, kept me in this mentality where my brain associated weight loss equals good and weight gain equals bad, which I know is wrong. Despite 99% of the feedback being positive about my all-in journey, it's no secret that I received very vocal, unsavory comments about my weight gain, which really made me scared to ever regain weight again or I want to gain weight, or but, but are they gonna start calling me pregnant again? <laughs> However, as my body weight kept decreasing, my desire to stay lean kept increasing. And it took me a few months to realize that I was tiptoeing in very dangerous territory. I think I was subconsciously restricting and blaming it on my lack of appetite. Of course, I wasn't lying about that. I genuinely never really felt that hungry, but I could have made more of an effort to just eat more and prevent that unnecessary weight loss, but I didn't. And it's hard for me to film these types of clips because I want to be better and like has overcome all these issues, but I'm human and I just haven't. And I guess I was too scared to not be a perfect example of this journey. And I was, I guess, subconsciously trying to protect myself from getting hate again. With that weight loss came some of the signs of old habits. Habits I thought were long gone, but it turns out they were just lying dormant. My mind is a little disordered because I don't want to gain too much weight too fast. It's like all these disordered thoughts coming back. Like restrictive habits like choosing the healthy option at a restaurant, skipping meals if I wasn't hungry, and feeling guilty after a high calorie meal. All of which I ignored at first, making up excuses like, oh, well, if I'm not hungry and I'm eating intuitively, not eating would just be listening to my body, right? And in actuality, what I needed to do was to get my anxiety under control so I could get my appetite back and get rid of the mindset of being scared to regain weight. All of which kind of required me to take a break from social media. So here I am after regaining healthy weight to report back on what I did to fix these issues. One, to let you know where I've been. And two, in the event you've ever been in my position and started slipping back into old habits. Maybe this video and telling you what I did might help you. I felt like I needed to get past these struggles on my own terms because I feel like if it doesn't come from within, I knew that it wouldn't last. I recognized quickly that the first thing I needed to do was fix my anxiety. So I signed up for a service that helps you find a therapist because I wanted to give therapy a try. Jeff was actually having a lot of success with therapy, so I went in feeling really optimistic. However, I tried three different therapists and all of them made me feel so much worse, but for totally different reasons. One was like talking to radio silence. I was like, 
Come on, give me something. It was basically like talking to myself. Another gave me so much homework and made me buy so many books that I was incredibly overwhelmed. All of them made me feel more anxious after the call than before it. So for me personally, I didn't have success with it, but I still recommend trying therapy because I know it does help a lot of people. After that, my anxiety continued to get worse. Sometimes I go five steps forward just to move 10 steps back and it's just tough sometimes. So I decided to go to a psychiatrist and I started taking medication for my anxiety. And by far, that helped me the most. The changes were both subtle while being simultaneously like super significant. One day I woke up and I didn't feel like my heart was going to leap out of my chest anymore. And thoughts of regaining weight didn't make me feel like I was going to lose everything and reap the wrath of the internet. I could breathe. It also didn't hurt that my doctor was really kind and patient. He was the best therapist of them all and he isn't even a therapist. From there, I had the realization that Hey, whenever I talk to Kayla, who you've seen on my channel before, I always feel a million times better. There you are, oh my God. I know, you look beautiful, how are you? <laughs> I tried therapy because I would never want to abuse Kayla's friendship, but I needed her and I had a feeling she would know what to do. Like for example, this is what starts a lot of disordered eating for a lot of people is you lose weight and then you get the world that validates all of your core fears and your core beliefs of I'm only good enough if I'm X size or if I look a certain way. So there's that element too that's gonna cause those thoughts to come back. And thankfully I had a wonderful call with her. She made me feel like all of my problems we're normal. I mean, you know my story. Like, I did this how many times? From working now with people, this happens more often than not. Like, it's pretty rare where people don't go back. She didn't make me feel like I relapsed or that it was strange to feel this way. She reassured me that I was doing the right thing, trying to fix it before it went too far and was too far down the rabbit hole of feeling that irrational desire of, I'm so lean again and I like it, which I know can happen very easily. If you catch yourself, you can learn a lot for yourself of you know what not to do the next time. And it really strengthens your faith in the process mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. it strengthens your why. It strengthens mm -hmm. so much. So since my anxiety was finally under control, chatting with her made the solution so simple. It's silly how simple it is, but it was painfully easier said than done. But I still get scared that I'm, I still get scared. This is why like, you know, like I didn't message you like, oh, I'm all good now. That is not, I was far from the truth. So the solution was just that I just had to eat more and not care what my body looks like and not care what people think and not care if I get hate. I was actually at a point where regaining weight wasn't my biggest fear anymore. I was actually more scared that I lost too much weight and I was terrified of going back down the path of where I was before I went all in. And that realization really scared the wits out of me. I thought to myself, after everything I've been through, a bit of anxiety is going to push me back all the way to the beginning. I was in shock that I almost let it happen. And to be honest with you, I started eating again like it was my job. And I say that because that is exactly what Jeff said to me when he told me to snap out of it in the nicest way possible. He said, you gotta eat. Jeff has always been my rock. And even through the few months that I got off track, he was there to help me get back on track. Another thing that made an enormous difference was that I stopped weighing myself. And this one will seem like a duh moment, but I spent years weighing myself before All In, and then I had to document my weight gain and weight loss during All In, and then continued to document my weight after All In. It was actually really hard to stop because I had this irrational feeling that I was duty bound to keeping tabs on this information for the sake of my channel. I don't really know, I just felt like I had to. But I had to throw that out the window because I really don't think you guys give it how much I weigh at this point. I finally said, screw documentation and stopped. And it is the first time 
in almost a decade that I have absolutely no clue how much I weigh. I couldn't even guess if I tried. And it feels really great not knowing. Being on the brink of going a million steps backwards after everything I've accomplished really puts into perspective how mental body image is and how damaging society is. I suffer still from having food guilt, even though I'm trying to gain weight. Like this is how silly and mental this can be. Like food and weight and your body is such a mental mind game. As someone who preaches body neutrality and gained a bunch of weight in front of millions of people still struggled with weight gain, anxiety, and body image. It's messed up and I have no excuse other than I'm human and a woman and we can be really hard on ourselves. I'm not an exception to that. However, this isn't entirely a sad story. I did get back on track and I caught myself before things went too far. I never got to the point where I started developing high levels of hunger again and I just started eating and regaining weight like it was my job. I did it and here I am, just a few months off course, just a few. So if you've ever been there in the position that I was in, it's never too late to get back on track. I'm here with you. I know exactly how you feel. These days I'm eating consistently and often, which is what I was doing before. I kind of ran into this trouble and got off course, but I'm back to doing it again. I'm back on track and I've regained healthy weight. And I realized that regaining weight was the best thing for me because I feel like once I broke the fear and anxiety revolving around my weight fluctuating, I could just get past it and move on. But like, I want to come back with no excuses. I will own all of my mistakes. I've made many. I'm just sharing, like, don't do as I do. Like, I'm just sharing the, the things that I've done and they may or may not work for everybody. Okay, so last but not least, I want to get your input on what you would like to see from me. Many of you want me to stop talking about All In and I absolutely understand. I take no offense at all. I get it. It can be repetitive and tiresome to hear about. I can 100% move on from here and just talk about what I'm doing now. I can do daily vlogs, informative videos, do full days of eating, fitness related stuff like how I train, or I could do try on hauls. I don't know, you just gotta let me know. Because aside from that, my all in journey did enable me to reach a lot of the eating disorder and recovery community because there does seem to be a lot of overlap. It's interesting because I actually never intended to reach anyone outside of the fitness community in my own little corner of YouTube, but I did. My original intention was always to reach women who maybe competed in the past or women who were really into fitness who could relate to the issues that I was struggling with. However, I am incredibly happy that my struggles resonated with the recovery and ED community because my videos do seem to help. So. Since you are here, I wanted to know if you want me to cover this topic. I can bring on experts and interview them to discuss certain topics you want to hear about. As you may or may not know, my PhD is in pathology and cell biology with a focus on ovarian cancer. So nothing to do with nutrition. I'm just a girl who struggled with extreme hunger, who just happens to also have a PhD. It doesn't make me any type of authority on this stuff. So maybe you can give me some recommendations of who you'd like me to chat with on my channel and what you'd like me to cover. It's also really important to me that I talk to experts because I personally did not have anorexia or binge eating disorder, but was definitely orthorexic before All In. I had a very rigid bodybuilder type diet, so I think I would be a good interlocutor due to my past struggles. People might think that I binged on my cheat days, but I was always fully in control and just ate to satiety. Mm -hmm. wow. It was just that my satiety was super, super high, but my orthorexic tendencies were still restrictive enough to lead to extreme hunger, and I'm sure I'm not alone. The last thing I wanna discuss is that regardless of the type of content I make moving forward, I wanna clear the air about a particular concern people have, and that is about showing my physique. I know I showed it in this video, but I never want to be triggering. However, I've noticed showing my body seems to upset people since I've lost weight. 
I guess I just never thought of not showing my body because throughout the entire process of me gaining weight and when I was at my heaviest weight, I never got any complaints. On the contrary, I was praised for my bravery. But now showing the exact same thing, but in a smaller body, seems to upset people. So just let me know so I'm aware. Would it be preferable if I didn't show my physique in videos anymore? Your input would be most appreciated and help me navigate what I should film and what I should share. So that's it for this video. I'm feeling a bit vulnerable right now, but I felt like I just needed to open up to you guys. I love you guys and I missed you so much. I will see you in the next one. Just like that. Mm-hmm.